Okay, so thank you for the introduction and good, uh, and good morning, everyone. I'm Zhe Yang from Tsinghua University. Today, I'm going to present our work, Lambda I.O., a unified I.O. stack for computational storage. Let's begin with a brief introduction of computational storage. The picture shows a conventional computer system. The host has CPU and DRAM. The device stores data. So in data-intensive applications, the host reads the input from the device to the DRAM. Then the host processes data in the CPU. After that, the host writes the output back to the device. In these scenarios, the host suffers from accessing sizable data on the device. To tackle the problem, people proposed computational storage. Computational storage encapsulates computation resources to the storage device, including the disk and the SSD. The data is processed inside the device. In this way, the cost of data transfer becomes much lower. There have been a host of researches on computational storage. Existing works focus on accelerating in the device, but overlook the host. Although offloading computation to the storage device is promising, we find that we should not blindly push down all the computation. Here presents an experiment. We compare how two applications, states 64 and state 32, perform on the host and the device. As shown in sub-figure A, state 64 runs faster on the device. However, state 32 runs faster on the host. Sub-figure B shows the latency throughout the execution progress of state 64. You can see that it runs faster on the device at the beginning, but then it runs faster on the host. In a nutshell, an application can run faster in either the host or the device. Therefore, we should exploit both the host and the device, although we have computational storage devices. We explore a fundamental question in our work, how to build a unified I.O. stack that exploits both the host and the device. To answer the question, we identify three challenges to build a unified I.O. stack. The picture shows a vanilla I.O. stack, including the host side user space and kernel space, and the storage device. First, how to use. A vanilla I.O. stack has no easy-to-use APIs for computational storage because it only has read and write interfaces, such as pread, pwrite. Second, how to compute. A vanilla I.O. stack is designed for storage with no computation runtime. Third, how to dispatch. A vanilla I.O. stack schedules only I.O. requests. The scheduling becomes much more complicated with computation. Facing these challenges, Lambda I.O. comes with three key designs. First, Lambda I.O. proposes easy-to-use APIs that hide the underlying details. Second, Lambda I.O. has a cross-platform Lambda runtime. Third, Lambda I.O. introduces dynamic request dispatching. First, we introduce the first design. How Lambda I.O. APIs and, uh, and workflow look like. So on top of normal I.O. APIs of open, close, read, and write, we extend four APIs to enable computation. Lambda, load Lambda, period Lambda, and pwrite Lambda. In this pre presentation, we introduce two APIs, Lambda and period Lambda. We go on with an example to some integers in a file. The Lambda API is to define a computational logic to be offloaded. It has two important parameters, 
input and output. An application defines its own logic by filling the function body. It consumes data from the input area and produces data to the output area. Here is an example to some integers in a file. It iterates integers in the input area and adds them up. Then it stores the sum to the output area. Period lambda executes a lambda function with reading the file. Period lambda accepts the same parameters of period, but it has an additional parameter, lambda id, to identify the loaded lambda function. Period lambda performs in three steps. First, it reads the file data with a given offset and length, and it sets the file data as the input of the lambda function. Second, it executes the lambda function in the wrong time. Third, it returns the output of the lambda function to the application. Here is an example to some integers in a file. The program iterates over the file and calls period lambda. It adds up the output of all period lambda calls, and so it can get the final result. Let's compare the code using lambda IO with the code using vanilla IO. We can see that two pieces of code are almost the same. The APIs of Lambda I.O. is straightforward, and the porting overhead is relatively small. The second design is cross-platform Lambda runtime. To build a cross-platform Lambda runtime, we tried to resort to eBPF because it offers hardware-independent bytecode format. Although eBPF has attracted more and more attention recently, we find it is unsuitable to computational storage because of two problems. eBPF's static verification is over strict for computational storage. Let's take the code as an example. So the first issue is pointer access. eBPF is designed for the kernel, so the verifier Checks, the, checks that the program does not access arbitrary kernel addresses. In this code, as input and output are memory pointers, the verifier does not know their boundaries, so it prohibits pointer dereference. De the second issue is dynamic length loop. The boundary less i in this code is unknown during the static verification. So in the verif verifier's view, the loop is, uh, is unbounded, so the, problem, uh, the program does not complete in limited time. Therefore, it rejects the program. Facing two problems, we extend eBPF to SBPF, where S stands for storage. The core idea is to lose the static verification and introduce dynamic checking. For pointer access of input and output buffers, we check each access during running to make sure the access is within the memory boundary from input to input plus length i. For dynamic length loop, we count the number of loops during runtime and set a threshold to limit the number of loops. When the number of loops exceeds the threshold, the runtime aborts the program. The third design is dynamic request dispatching. The goal is to dispatch requests to the faster side of the host and the device effectively and efficiently. For effectiveness, we model the execution time on both sides. Therefore, Lambda I.O. can use models to predict execution time on both sides and find the faster side. For efficiency, the request dispatcher profiles and dispatches periodically so that it introduces low scheduling overhead. The execution time is composed of data transfer and a data computation. 
We consider a lot of factors in Lambda I.O., such as computation complexity, data size, cache ratio, and real-time status on both sides. In this presentation, we focus on cache ratio. Cache ratio means how much data has been cached in the whole site page cache. We consider the time to execute period lambda in the host. Without cache, it loads all the data from the storage media to the device controller and finally to the host. Then it computes in the host. But when the host caches partial data in the page cache, it needs to load less data from the device, and the total execution time can be smaller. We can observe that the higher the cache ratio is, the less time is needed to transfer data. So the more Lambda I.O. tends to execute the request in the host. You can find detailed modeling equations in our paper. With modeling execution time, Lambda I.O. can use equations to predict execution time on both sides. Afterwards, Lambda I.O. profiles and dispatches requests periodically. During a period of n requests, Lambda I.O. submits the first k requests to both sides so that it can profile the real-time status of the host and the device. For the remaining n minus k requests, Lambda I.O. computes the execution time using, using the models we mentioned before. Therefore, it dispatches the requests to the faster side where it needs uh, less time to execute. We present the evaluation results. We implement Lambda I.O. in full-stack software and hardware environment. We use DAISY OpenSSD for the device prototype. We implement the device NME device controller so that the DAISY OpenSSD can act as, an, as a standard NME device. We use five synthetic applications in the evaluation. The first four are read applications, and the last one is a write application. We compare performance of Lambda I.O. against vanilla Linux I.O. and existing computational storage approaches. Lambda kernel means all the requests are executed in the host kernel. Lambda device means all the requests are executed in the device. And Lambda I.O. means the requests are dispatched dynamically. The figure presents performance of synthetic applications without warm-up. With, without warm-up, we mean that we drop the page cache before each execution. So all the data has to be loaded from the device. We can see that all applications except state 32 run faster on the device than the host. And you can see that Lambda I.O. spends the less execution time between the host and the device. This demonstrates that it can dispatch requests to the faster side. Here is a result with warm-up. We read the file sequentially by buffer I.O. before each execution. As reported in the figure, Lambda I.O. is faster than either side. This is because after warm-up, some data has been cached in the host, and the rest is on the device. For cached data, Lambda I.O. dispatches requests to the host. And for uncached data, Lambda I.O. dispatches requests to the device. So it can dispatch requests to both sides to achieve better performance. Besides the synthetic applications, we also conduct the evaluation on a real application, SpaceCo. We modify Spark SQL to use Lambda I.O. The figure shows the results of OLAP workloads that are I.O. intensive. Lambda I.O. achieves a better performance between the host and the device. 
Therefore, Lambda I.O. performs similarly to vanilla I.O. Oh, sorry. Lambda I.O. achieves a better performance between the host and the device. With warm-up, like in synthetic applications, Lambda I.O. is faster than either side for I.O. intensive applications. This is because Lambda I.O. is aware of the whole side page cache and dispatches requests to both sides. The, the experiment demonstrates that real applications such as SpaceCo can benefit from Lambda I.O. Here is the conclusion. Lambda I.O. is a unified I.O. stack managing computa computation and storage sources across the host and the device. Lambda I.O. offloads a user-defined computational logic during read and write and dispatch requests between both sides. Lambda I.O. outperforms vanilla Linux I.O. significantly. Thank you for listening.